See, I think y'all are getting a good dose of big government, and so have I got it. And uh, I think I'm getting up to here with big government, aren't you? And that's the reason why that that I, well, the reason why I'm running is because the Lord may, uh, insisted that I do it. That's my reason. And uh, But the other part is I've had it up here with big government also. And we've got to go to Congress. We've got to get people up there who will slow down this mess, put the Constitution back in its place, and uh, and uh, if you please, make those who have violated it accountable. Make them accountable. Would they be arrested? I would hope so. Yes. Tried for treason, bribery. What did it say in there? Mis- 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 what kind of crimes did it say in there a little bit ago? Mis- kind of like misdemeanors? Yeah. Yeah. You need to go back. Go back and read your Constitution whenever y'all see what, what are you can bribery, well, of course treason, bribery, crimes, uh, what was it, misdemeanors? Ah, interesting thing though, what is considered a crime in Washington D.C.? Well, That's run by the Congress. Yeah, so they're free there. Uh, would you say maybe that everything that happens in Washington stays in Washington? Yes. <laughs> Okay, let's do uh, let's do uh, let's do section ten. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do section ten. We'll quit there. Okay, and uh, remember the reason why our forefathers spent so much time on this is because this is the center of the power right here in Congress, and they said you can do this. This is your limited powers, and to go outside of that is usurpation of your power. And we've allowed our president, we've allowed our Congress, and I'm gonna say. It. My opinion, and I can't speak for the two the the two the two years ago, excuse me, of the congressman that went in, but ever Congress, Senate, ever voting agency in the federal government, back of that for the last forty years, have been voting on items that are unconstitutional, and they should be called to, to account for it. We have to be accountable to God for what we do. They should be accountable to we the people. And by the way, there are four branches of the government. The fourth one is we the people. Okay? And we are the ones who enact it and organize it and set it up. We have the power. We need to start using our power. Because one of these days, God's going to say to you, to me, you weren't a very good citizen because I gave you these rules to go by and you, you let them go by the wayside. You got lax. Like me, I really didn't start doing anything until 2008. I'm a pastor of a church. Okay? And I, I, I stayed out of politics. Because the old doctrine of separation of church and states, I just accepted it. I never studied my constitution. It's about time we all studied our constitution. Would you agree with that? Okay, let's do 10 real quick now. Let's see. Uh, these are powers are forbidden to the states. Okay, no state may enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, or grant letters of retaliation. Okay, so the states can't do that. And I'm okay with that, aren't you? All the states, get together through our federal, through our Congress, can do it, okay? Number two, no state may coin money. I tell you what, I wonder if uh, maybe we are start making our own money. What do you all think? No state may coin money, print paper money, or make anything except gold and silver coins a method of paying debts. Yeah, I, I like the idea of gold and silver, don't you? Okay, number three, no state may pass any law which pronounces a person guilty of a crime or which is retroactive. You cannot produce a retroactive crime, okay? Number four, no state may pass any law that interferes with private contracts or grants any title of nobility. So you can't appoint me as pope, right? (laughs) Or we can appoint you as queen. We can't do that. <laughs> okay, number five. The consent of Congress is required before any state may assess any tax or imports or exports except what is absolutely necessary for executing its inspection laws. The net proceeds of all these taxes will be for the use of the Treasury of the United States, and all such laws will be subject to the revision and control of Congress. Congress is it. The Senate and the House are the ultimate final powers in our country. 
Uh, 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 not exactly. We are the final powers, what we're supposed to be. But we are ultimately, by our Constitution, we are the final powers. We say who goes and who don't go. And it's about, to, it's about time we start to say who's going to go and who's not going to go. Amen? I don't even get a bad meaning on that. Don't y'all think it's about time we start to decide who's going to go and who's going to stay? Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Number six. The consent of Congress is required before any state may access any tax based on the weight of shipments or keep troops or warships in times of peace or enter, enter into any agreement or compact with another state of foreign power, or foreign power or engage in war. So in other words, Texas cannot hire France or do an alliance with France, become buddies, and uh, we go to war. Go ahead. The last sentence of that particular paragraph, go. we should have the right to do it. There is an exception for engaging in war if a state is actually invaded or is in such immediate danger that it does not dare to wait. Right. And that's where we sit in New Mexico and Arizona and California. We are being invaded. That's right. What about our own government suing? Our own government? Who's our own government was suing for? Bringing you in the zoo in Arizona. Okay. I'll, okay, we'll pick. Just with immigration. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not sure where we're at on that. There is an exception for engaging in war if a state is actually invaded. Or is in such immediate danger that it does not dare to wait. So a state can take action rather than wait. Uh, this has more, I think, to do with invasion by war rather than illegal aliens. But, well, well there, there is a drug war on the border, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what they did, they Okay, our state... Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, I remember that. So Texas has the right to go down there and stop it. However, our governor seems to think that it's better to go ahead and to, uh, if these folks are coming here, illegal aliens, they need medical help, we'll go ahead and help them with medical. Now, in a way, you know, you don't want to turn anybody away. You don't want to see anybody uh, be sick and stay sick and not help them. Better yet, let's just send them back Let's give them instructions how to come back and become a citizen, and then they can pay taxes like we do. Don't y'all think that's good? Okay, this is all. We're going to start Article 2. Uh, do y'all want to meet again next month, the third Thursday night? It's open. Uh, I've already checked, and they said we're open on Thursday night. Do y'all want to come back next Thursday night? Okay, good. Uh, read your book. Read these little Constitution books. You're going to love them. And don't forget the little footnotes. Oh, I got one thing to I got one thing to share with you. I got to go. I got to share this with you. Okay, okay, y'all ready for this now? Listen closely. Alabama declares war on the U.S. Did y'all seen this yet? You haven't seen? Okay, Alabama declares war on the U.S. Okay, listen. President Barack Obama was in the Oval Office when his telephone rang. Hello, President Obama, in a heavily accented Southern voice, said, "This is Archie down here at Joe's Catfish Shack in Mobile." And I'm calling to tell you that we are officially declaring war on y'all. Well, Archie Barack replied, this is indeed important news. How big is your army? Archie said, right now, about a moment, calculation, there's myself, my cousin Harold, my next door neighbor Randy, and the whole dart team from Hooters. That makes eight. Barack paused. I must tell you, Archie, that I have one million men in my army waiting to move on my command. Wow, said Archie, I'll have to call you back. Sure enough, the next day, Archie called again. Mr. Obama, the war, is, well, the war is still on. We have managed to acquire some infantry equipment. And what equipment uh, would that be, Archie? Barack asked. He said, well, sir, we have two combines, a bulldozer, and Harry's farm tractor. President Obama sighed. I must tell you, Archie, 
I've got 16,000 tanks, 14,000 armored personnel carriers. I've also increased my army to one and a half million since we last spoke. Lord above, said Archie, I'll be getting back to you. Sure enough, Archie called again the next day. He said, President Obama, I'm sorry to tell you that we have just had to call off this year war. I'm sorry to hear that, said Barack. He says, uh, why the sudden change of heart? Well, sir, said Archie, we all sat over ourselves down and had a long chat over sweet tea and come to realize there's just no way we can feed that many prisoners. <laughs> Good night. God bless y'all. And uh, <laughs> I hope uh, somebody was watching tonight, they can tell us how we came across on the uh, on Internet. And may God bless y'all and thank you. And may God bless America. Amen. And may we, our Constitution rise again and be once more observed. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you all. Thank you, Shad. Shad's doing all the hard work, isn't he? He puts all this stuff and gets it on gets it on the internet and everything like that.